it's hard to go 12-15 with nobody even guarding you right under the bucket as we get set. Duke in their home whites and Coastal Carolina in their teal green. What are you going with? I'm going with teal. I think teal is the official color. Sweet. Duke, early drive. Going to the basket was Jackson. Extra pass. And the whistle as Donovan will go to the line. I'll well, talk about really good freshman. Jaden Donovan, number four, the six foot freshman out of the Washington, D.C. area. She was the number three recruit in the country. Coach Kara Lawson's highest ranked recruit since she's been here at Duke. And uh, Jada Donovan's one to watch. She's ESPN top impact freshman, ACC newcomer watch list. So she's going to be a lot of fun as we she continues to develop in her Duke uniform. Coming off a seven point game in that 83 to 53 win over Richmond. Coincidentally, in just kind of a random stat, Georgia Tech beat Coastal Carolina by the same identical score, 83 to 53. We got to play the lottery tonight on that one, right? Long distance shot off the front of the rim. Coastal Carolina led by Kevin Pedersen now in his second season. First Duke led by Kara Lawson. Good to spend time with Coach Pedersen. He's a bright light. What a great guy. And he's a great coach. He has 444 wins as a head coach. Almost a 70% winning percentage. I mean, he's done a great job, and we'll talk a little bit more about him later. Three from deep. Biggest player out there, Kennedy Brown at six foot six, makes it look easy. Three nothing, Duke. Blue Devils really want to establish themselves as a three point threat. And Kennedy Brown, the transfer from Oregon State last season, one of the returning, one of two returning starters for this Blue Devil team. Little pinch post action by Coastal Carolina, well defended by the Blue Devils. And when you're in that pinch post, you got to hug that ball and squeeze it. And Kennedy Brown gets a hand on it, knocks it loose, sets up that three and the offensive board. And there's Jaden Donovan, the freshman. And there's Duke on the offensive glass. They're so good at crashing the boards. Stifling defense from Duke. That is without question the number one staple of a Kara Lawson basketball team and they turn it into two it's 5-0 and they cause another turnover. Duke is long they're athletic and they crash the boards when that shot goes up Jaden Donovan gets in there and that's an easy put back for her if you're Coastal Carolina you're going to have to put a body on and push back and not give Duke second shot opportunities tonight. Duke already two for three from the floor. Another three, and money again from Brown. Brown stroking it. She's got six. And that's the same action. Coastal's going to have to figure out how to defend that play. They like to mix up their defenses. They have a couple different presses. They'll play some man. They'll play some zone. But right now, Kennedy Brown wide open twice in a row. I feel like that was one that Coach Pedersen was willing to give away. We'll see if they step out. On the outlet, extra pass for deep. Jackson rolls around the rim. Offensive rebounds. And up and in for Donovan. That's going to be a timeout for Coach Pedersen. This is exactly what Develop, developer of player development, young ladies. Really enjoyed talking with him today. Yeah, he said his family always made the Myrtle Beach area where Coastal Carolina is located a vacation destination, and it was one of his three choices, the only three that would leave Lander. He wouldn't give us the other two, but he's settled in at Coastal Carolina. If you're brown there, I think you got to do a heat check. He said she's going to drive to the basket, and she'll go to the line and shoot two. I don't think Coach Lawson's a big fan of heat checks, though. I think Coastal did a nice job getting through that full court press. They just, Kennedy Brown is just a rim protector. She, you got to shoot around her, you got to shoot over her. She really has an ability to alter shots. It's going to be tough for Coastal to score at the rim. Brown, a career 76% free throw shooter. Carol Lawson now in her fourth season, 47 and 21. What a player the late great Pat Summit. Uh, she's one of 
three NCAA Division I basketball coaches to play in a Final Four, win an Olympic gold medal, and win a WNBA championship. One of the most respected players in the game, and an easy putback, and Duke is on a roll right now, and Coastal needs to find a way to stop the bleeding, and here comes the Duke pressure. Well, that was the Duke pressure that led to that point 13 and 14 there from Richardson. They are relentless. It's 14 zip. And Coastal Carolina has only been able to get off two shots in the first four minutes, make it three. Coastal Picked up by Brown, go ahead. Trying to run that scissor cut off the post and got a good look. It's so hard to come into Cameron and knock down shots. Most people are jittery and there's a charge right there. It's gonna go against Reagan Richardson. Richardson on Richardson. Reagan Richardson attacked the basket. We talked about him in the open. Deja Richardson getting some position. You see how Reagan Richardson just lowered her shoulder right there. Kanawa is going to come into the game now. Off that double double. Over the top pass against the press on that one. The spin move and the foul. Great little spin attacking. The basket there, Coastal Carolina, was Delana Carter, the freshman from Deep City, Texas, for Coach Pedersen. Well, to give Coastal an opportunity to put some points on the board. Nice job against the press break, throw over the top, create a little two-on-two -two situation. Carter attacking the rim. Duke's defense, I mean, Coach Lawson hangs her hat on their defense, and they were number two in the country last year in scoring defense. I mean, that's a incredible statistic. Ninth in field goal percent defense held 17 opponents to 50% or less. So if you want to beat Duke, you're going to have to find a way to crack this defense. Right now, Coastal Carolina having a hard time moving the basketball. Another foul called against Duke. That's Richardson. Coach Pedersen telling us how proud he was of his team and how, they, how much they attacked the basket against Georgia Tech and got to the free throw line. And he does a lot with uh, charting, charting margins and free throw margin is one of the things he charts and rebounding margin. Coastal Carolina actually out-rebounded Georgia Tech in that game, 42-37. But they had 23 turnovers in that game and that's something they're gonna have to be really cognizant of today, taking care of the ball against this really powerful Duke defense. I'm sure you all figured out that they decided that on that spin move that the foul came before the shot. So that's why Coastal Carolina is still sitting with a goose egg down 14. I was optimistic that it was going to get her to the line, but mm -hmm. oh well. So Coach Pedersen is going to go to his bench as well as he'll bring into the game Riley Stack. Boy, he was high on Riley Stack. He said the word potential, I want to say, five times talking about her. She's a 6'4 freshman. Uh, he said she's super skilled. He said she had a bunch of power five offers, and she chose to come to Coastal, so he's really excited about what she brings to the team. And there's another drive to the basket, the finish, and now we are going to the free throw line on this one. There you go. Carter with the and one as the Chanticleers are on the board. That's what Coastal does. They like to attack the basket. Great job getting to the rim. Finishing for Carter. So Carter, coming off a nine point game against Georgia Tech, was five for eight from the line, two for eight from the field. Well, she's a freshman. McDonald's All-American nominee. She scored over 3,000 points in high school, so she knows how to put the ball in the basket. Little pressure of their own from Coastal Carolina. Good speed, though, from Duke to initially break it. Now they'll set up their offense. Double high post set. Kennedy Brown's wow. feeling it. A couple of feet in from the three-point line, but same stroke. She's got eight. That's great footwork. A little reverse pivot faces up and knocks it down. Let's see what Stack can do. Step back deep. That's a nice shot with a hand in the face right there. And we 
know Deasia Richardson can shoot it. It's pretty stroke from long range, and it didn't take her long to get that ball out of her hands. Nice quick release. Kanawa will give it up. They'll get the play call from Coach Lawson. Good back cut into trouble. Attacking the glass, a little bit short. As Donovan crashing the boards. Oh, there you go, some hops. You can see the athleticism of Jaden Donovan, and you see this is a nice read. Defense turns their head, nice back cut. Donovan again on the boards. Man, what a rebounder she is. I thought we might have to have our producer, Chad Lampman, come down and get that ball out of that hoop. No problem, though. Brown finally misses. Stack with the rebound. Well, it's Riley Stack in there at 6'4". She's going to make things a little bit more difficult under the basket for Kennedy Brown. Another step back smooth from Richardson. She's starting to settle in. Coach said she was a big time guard. Cut this lead to eight. Donovan, Brown, left hand. Good defense from Stack, the freshman ready. Brown's like, I'm only gonna shoot it from 18 and further out. These Coastal Carolina freshmen making some big contributions early in their career. Coach Pedersen telling us he has three top 200 recruits on his team. There's only six total in the Sun Belt Conference. Ramsey, Stack, and Carter making their presence known. Another turnover off the press. This time Jackson can't make it. And Coastal Carolina can ill afford to turn the ball over against pressure and give Duke easy looks at the basket. They're fortunate to get it back here. They're going to have to do a much better job taking care of the basketball. They've turned it over six times already, Debbie. seven you heard you heard her head hit the floor on that one it's not getting up too quickly we're gonna call Thomas the freshman from Charlestown West Virginia for the foul that's Delana Carter we hit her head which seems to be okay Oh, and that, ooh, that hurts. She's okay. She's got knocked down. She's gonna go to the free throw line. Freshman. Coach says she gets to the rim and she gets to the free throw line and that she did a fantastic job with it against in her debut against Georgia Tech. And right now, she's an opportunity to cut this to six, which looked like Duke was gonna run out of the gym with this one. Coach Pedersen called the timeout, kind of let his team have it a little bit, and I think he told them to crash the boards because they're a really good rebounding team. Yeah, if you joined us late, it was 10-0 on a blink of an eye. And Coach Pedersen with an animated timeout, and they have responded. First free throw not there, second one. Touched every part of the rim and down and in. A little full court pressure again. Duke will take their time bringing it up. Duke playing without Vanessa De Jesus, an upperclassman for the Blue Devils, played some point, played some two guard. So some question marks at the point guard spot for Duke this season, even though they brought in Tiana Mayer, the transfer from Boston College, who's running the point for them right now. Nice drive and dish. It's go off Coastal Carolina, it'll stay with Duke. You see 6'5 graduate student Camilla Espo. She's a transfer from Yale, one of those two transfers for Duke that both would really make an impact this season. But she gives them a lot of length and, and depth and she's great on the glass. Duke shooting 43%. That's a tough shot to make and to make it look easy is Jackson. Ashlyn Jackson is sophomore from Texas. She's a returner. She played in 33 games last season, averaged about 13 minutes. Anticipate that she'll have a much bigger role this season. So we see the Blue Devils switching on the perimeter. Again, Chanticleer is just probing the defense, trying to get into the paint. Comes up short. Here comes Duke in transition. Right at the elbow, Jackson, who started the transition. Now we'll get the play call from Coach Lawson. 
Hemsbo, number 21, is into the game. That's a deep three, and that's in for Jackson. That's some confidence for Jackson from a long range. Stepped back off of her defensively, and she just, like, shot it right in her defender's face. Wow. Looked like a little bump there. Let's take a look at Jackson. Said kind of a role player last year, but to really stepping up, which is what the Blue Devils need. Short shot in the paint and right there. Nobody's going to guard me. Nice follow through, knocks it down. She was a McDonald's All-American. I mean, she's a big guard at six foot. She can play one through three, gives the Duke a lot of versatility. Right now running the show for her team. Shot clock at 15. Travel, a little extra step there. And turned over by Duke. That is just their third turnover. Coastal's able to get into their press. They give Duke some problems, eat some time off the shot clock, get them out of rhythm a little bit. That time they handled Duke's pressure well. The horn set. Asia Richardson. I like it when the ball's in her hands. Duffed. And it goes out of bounds, unlucky, but a tremendous block right there from Akanawa. Talked about Akanawa's debut, another long guard who's so athletic, and she's a shot blocker, 22 and 12 in her first game in Cameron. She's the first freshman since 2014 to get a double-double in her debut in Cameron. Nice back cut, but she runs into some height under the basket. That's Delaney Thomas, the 6'3 freshman from Charlestown, West Virginia, part of that number six recruiting class for Carol Lawson. We're getting a nice opportunity to see some of these very talented freshmen for Duke. Shot clock violation. You talked about the big numbers for Kanawa in the open. She did not have a block though, and she's now added that in just her second game. She looks like a stat stuffer. I think she's going to produce some big numbers here at Duke. Coach Lawson always runs a ton of players through. Another rebound. offensive rebound. Jackson, yes. And Jackson's got eight. Nice to see some of the Duke returners who played limited minutes last year stepping into these news roles. The crowd wants a carry on that one, but the officials didn't call it. Ashlyn Jackson with eight points already in this game. Yeah, the transfer portal hit Duke as well as they saw some players exit right, but some new players come in. That's the way it is now in college basketball. Indeed, and you see that Duke pressure making it really difficult for Coastal to make the next pass. Coach Lawson wants her team to be disruptive with their defense, and right now they are doing just that. Emsbo is fouled. And she'll go to the line and shoot two. She's out there with Jackson, Akanawa, Thomas. Emsbo was a first team all Ivy League player at Yale, led the Ivy in blocks, scored over 1,000 points, and only played three years, was injured her senior year. Transferred in here to Duke. One is in. It's got to be nice for the Duke coaching to staff to see what a variety of scoring weapons they have. Emsbo had eight in that opening win. She was a plus 24 when she was on the court, so that's always a good number. Coastal had, did a really good job the first couple possessions just going right through the press, and right now they're just dribbling into that initial trap against the 1-2-2. Two, two. Duke ball again. So right now it's turnovers, offensive rebounds, and some good long-range shooting by Duke that are really the difference in this game. Duke has forced nine turnovers. 
and we still have 32 seconds left here in the first with the score Duke 26 most to Carolina nine and a four for eight from behind the arc Duke made seven threes in the opener against Richmond shot 44 percent if they can establish that part of the game going to be a nice season for the Blue Devils. Pick number seven in the preseason in the ACC. Jackson. Saw Jackson calling for the high screen. She'll get it. And that is an offensive foul. A little bit too much of a shoulder bump right there, Debbie, from Thomas. Yeah, Delaney Thomas, the freshman, called for a moving screen. And we talked about in the open, the freshmen are learning right now. They're learning new systems. They're learning the Division One style of play. And those little tiny defensive details, the discipline on defense, that comes with time and experience. So after the foul, Thomas will go to the bench. Here comes Jordan Wood, the fourth freshman in the sixth ranked class. She's from Chicago, she's 6'4". She's gonna get called for the foul. Michaela Conjay, she's their 5'11 graduate student and their leader. She's a two-time Division II All-American. She's played all five years with Coach Pedersen, left Lander with him, came here to play her final season at Coastal. They really expect a lot from her. She was a point guard. He turned her into a center, basically, which you don't see that every day. That she's got guard skills playing the post. We're going to need her to step it up in this game. They want to stay in it. And they're going to need to make their free throws if they want to stay in it. Yeah, that's one of the key points of you, that you already mentioned that Coach Pedersen keeps track of fouls and free throws. 7.2 seconds remaining here in the first. Both. Jackson. Extra pass and a good one. They get it off in time. But off the back of the rim. A massive start by Duke. They got off to a 10 zip lead. Action Jackson with eight points. And Kennedy Brown. Not one, but two threes, and another one about three feet in front of that. All part of a big lead for Duke, 26 to nine. Which was second in Division One, and many coaches who played against them will tell you it was one of the best defenses they have seen. Yeah, it's stifling. And they've continued that. Granted, the competition is gonna get better and better as they head toward ACC play, but the mindset of defense will not change. A little bit of a four shot that time from Duke and it's gonna go out of bounds back to Coastal Carolina. Well, and when you have new players, especially freshmen, you're teaching, you're teaching one layer at a time. So they learn basic defense and they learn Duke defense and then you build schemes and, and layers and, and different pieces of your defense. And right now the freshmen are just adjusting to playing the D1 level and Coach Lawson will continue to put in all of her different pieces. Looking for that high low look down low to DeAsia Richardson. She gets pushed out of bounds. There's another foul on Duke. Hey, hey, hey. Hey. Donovan. Hey, Thomas has two. Mayer has two. Richardson got two kind of pretty quick. Screen the screener action. Richardson brings it out. Looking to Brown. throw it into the post, trying to lob it over the top of Kennedy Brown. That's not going to happen. And you can just see that every set that Coastal tries to run, Duke just makes it difficult. They've taken the rhythm of their offense away and make them take contested shots, shots late in the shot clock. Kanjay denied by Brown, gives it up, and then a travel. There's that defense. Doesn't matter where it is on the court. It can start from the press. And then their defensive set's phenomenal. Well, that's the 10th turnover of the game by Coastal Carolina, and that's just 
they want to stay in this game. And they had cut it to six. They had, they had gone on a little run, cut it to six, but Duke back-to-back -back buckets and the turnovers and the offensive rebounds are just really killing him right now. Brown, who's three for five, gives up a great pass, and Jackson now with 10, tying Brown for the leading scores in the game, both in double digits. Speaking of tens, attacking the basket is number 10, Carter, but she runs right into a whole lot of white jerseys. Duke going the other way, and it'll go off the foot there of Donovan. It's a great read. Step out, call for it. Defense turns their head. Nice back cut to the basket. Easy lay-in, and Kennedy Brown, not only can she shoot the three, score around the rim, rebound, but she's a great passer. That's why they use her so often in that pinch post area, because she sees all of her teammates. You can see just the, diff the degree of difficulty of every shot that Coastal Carolina is being forced to take right now. That was Brown who caused that difficulty, and it's Jackson's night. She's got 13 on six of 10 shooting, and it's 31 to nine. Ashlyn Jackson picking up where Reagan Richardson left off behind the arc, knocking it down. It's all Duke, 30. 13 points in 11 minutes for number three, Ashlyn Jackson for Duke. On Monday night, it was all Reagan Richardson with 28 points, and she's on the bench right now with two fouls. So in comes sophomore Ashlyn Jackson, and she's just having a great game as well. Brown gets beat to the basket there by Richardson. And Richardson will go to the line. Much better job getting through the press that time by the Chanticleers. We talked about Deasia Richardson in the open. She transferred in after a year at Tennessee State. She's an all Sunbelt third team selection. Averaged 13.8 a game last season, was their second leading scorer. Coach calls her passionate. They need her to exert her passion in this game. And another missed free throw. That's going to go off Brown. That's the kind of effort play that Kevin Pedersen is looking for. Pedersen, a graduate of Clemson in 1999. He was a student manager for the men's team. You know, just worked his way into the coaching ranks. Just an errant pass right there. I love his story. I still can't believe that story, by the way. Like, go ahead and tell it. I mean, are you kidding me? The Coach K, so he's a manager, and the locker room is not right. The shower isn't right. And he tells Coach Pedersen, hey, can you come help me? And in his suit, which Coach Pedersen said, you know, his suit's a little bit more expensive than his, they're in there scrubbing the shower. I, st I, I can't believe it. That's Coach K. He's a good guy <laughs> helping the manager clean up the floor before the game. I mean, you talk about a memory that he'll never, ever, ever forget. Costa really needs to find a way to attack this press. Get layups or threes. It's right now, the denial is really making it difficult, even inbounding. Just to put a capper on that story, at one point, Coach K did say to Mr. Pedersen, do you think Rick Barnes would be in here doing this? <laughs> hilarious. Dean Smith just smiled. Ball pressure just really, really up. A little, tried to kick it back on that screen, but just a little miscommunication, and the freshman Wood comes up with the ball, passes a little bit behind. Need a bounce pass there, Debbie. Well, and the pass needs to be more accurate, and that's another thing the freshmen learn. You know, the game's a lot faster, and Duke likes to get out in transition. Passing's key, and where you put the pass to set up your teammate for an easy shot is really important. What this game is doing for Duke right now, though, it's giving its freshmen an opportunity to play some minutes, which is going to be really important. That's what non-conference is all about. Thirty-one to ten, and the pressure foul called against Kanawha. Kanawha. 
Coastal just really, really struggling. It looked like it was going to be so easy for them early on. They went right through the pressure, and they've struggled ever since. Here comes a double team. Nice job by Carter to split it. See what they can do in the half court set here. Another foul called against Okanawa. She's got some quick hands, though. Jackson's going to come back in. Meanwhile, Richardson for Duke still on the bench with those two fouls. Eleven to three is the foul territory. That's a good drive to the basket, right down the middle, and the finish there from Carter. You see the explosiveness of the freshman, Delana Carter. Nice handoff off the high post. They needed that bucket. Tie up. Possession arrow belongs to Coastal Carolina. Coach Pedersen telling us his team would play multiple defenses, several presses, little man, a little zone. Their zone is a little quirky, too. We got to watch it in shoot around today, and some of the slides are really interesting. He wants to be a team that people have to prepare to play. Nice little back cut off the high post. That's going to be, oh, they're going to call a foul. Looked like the travel. Go into that Michaela Kanje matchup with Kennedy Brown. Pull Kennedy Brown away from the basket. She doesn't have the quickest feet. We said Kanje has some guard skills to see if she can pull her away and take her off the dribble. Kanje, 0 for 2 from the line. She was 2 for 3 in that 30-point loss to Georgia Tech to start the season. Right now, they've taken eight free throws to Duke six, and that's what Coach Pedersen talks about. He talked about the free throw, free throw margin, wanting to attack the basket and get to the more opportunities from the line. A little one, two, two, three quarter court press just designed to slow Duke down, take some time off the clock. Now it's going to go into this zone. Mayor. Loose ball scramble, good hustle there from Carter. Kennedy Brown gets called for the foul, and the Blue Devil faithful are not happy with that one, and I tend to kind of agree with them a little bit. We didn't see a whole lot of contact from up here. But nonetheless, it's going to send the Chanticleers back to the free throw line. So Brown will have a seat for Duke. Ten points in ten minutes. Six players for Duke with two fouls. And we've got six minutes to play in the second quarter. To each their own, Debbie, but I actually like a smaller roster. I felt like last year Duke had too many players, and I think it was kind of hard for them to get into a rhythm. No, oh, they had 10 players who averaged 13 minutes or more. They had seven different leading scorers over the course of the season. They had so much depth. Very different Duke team this season, but some really nice pieces that we're getting to see in these first two games. Yeah, and they have that same defensive mentality and we've got another whistle Deja Richardson is going to get called for the block there she tried to take another charge it's going to be her second foul this game is just a little bit disjointed not a whole well, lot of flow going on yeah especially the second quarter well said coach you know that one looked better than the first one to me but she didn't get the call Tiana Mayer sent to the free throw line. We talked about her at the transfer from Boston College. She was a member of the ACC All-Freshman team. Now get this, Dean. She averaged 11 points, 4.5 rebounds, 6.5 assists, and almost two steals a game as a freshman. I mean, that one of, the, one of the top in the country. I think there were only two other players that did that. I mean, that's just an amazing stat line. You know, we talked about the transfer portal early and at the shoot-around today. I liked your insight on, you know, kind of wishing maybe there was less in-conference. 
There's been a lot of good players from Boston College make other ACC teams better through the transfer portal. A lot of them. Yeah, Kenny Brooks was able to add one last year to his Final Four team, and um, you don't have to sit anymore. You can just transfer in conference and, and play right away. With a high post screen, kick back, and that's what Kennedy Brown scored on last time, but the block from Camilla Emsbo. And a shot clock violation. The six foot five Emsbo. This is just great defense. So you see the ball screen and the kick back. And Emsbo comes out of nowhere and just blocks that shot. A little agility there by the big girl. Way downtown, back of the rim. Pulled out of the air by Carter. Carter can push it, and she'll go to the line. So Jackson misses the shot and then fouls Carter, and Carter will shoot two. Third foul for Jackson. Wow, and the fouls just keep adding up for Duke. And Carter, you can just see that explosive speed. She's a good-looking freshman for Coastal Carolina. We said before, she scored over 3,000 points in her high school career. That's a, that's a lot of points. Right now, Coastal's five for 11 from the charity stripe. Gotta start taking advantage of some of these opportunities they're creating. You know, I love you talking about her 3,000 points, then I think about Coach Pedersen and the time he spent with us, and he he's right. He talked about the big time scorers are the ones that know how to get to the free throw line. You can't just shoot threes or you can't just shoot the 15 footers. You gotta be able to drive the basket, get fouled and go to the line. We've seen her do it over and over again today. Makes the second. Gets them back into their one, two, one, one, three quarter court. A little soft pressure. Duke easily gets through it. Now back into the zone and you'll Maybe get to see a little bit of the interesting slides. They have great weak side rebound, a little dance on the line there. Good rebound. Thomas gets bailed out by Cable. Cable, nice rebound, an extra pass right back to Thomas. Weak side rebound by Emma Cable, the sophomore, and the nice dish pass to the freshman, Delaney Thomas. Emma Cable. She's from Ontario. It's her second year. She played on the U19 Canadian team. Another more role player for Duke last year that we expect to get some more minutes this season. And everybody getting a chance right now to participate in the first half of this game. And coaches, like we said, they're still learning what lineups work. Developing chemistry, like teams just figuring out really who they are, trying to get new things in. Duke getting a lot of opportunity tonight to work on their full court pressure. Char Abron, the junior from Mississippi, has checked in for the Shanna Clears. The trail 34 to 15 with 445 remaining. And another Duke foul. That's just a little wing isolation for Carter. I mean, she's just explosive. She uses her body well. I mean, she's listed at 5'6. That might be a little bit generous. She's got that explosive speed. Co Coach Lawson's just, <laughs> what, what, what's going on? 15 fouls called against her Duke team. And the clock stopped and Coastal makes a free throw, getting them back over. Oh, they're seven from 14 now. Carter leads all players in points though. seeing those qualities that led her to 3,000 plus in high school. You're right, that is a lot of points. And she's got three rebounds. Doing a little bit of everything. That's it. Middle and opposite. Right through the press. See what Duke's able to do against this zone. Extra pass and Cable for three. This has been the offense for the Shannon Clears. No foul that time. The rebound is there. It'll go out of bounds. Right now, the offense is get it to Carter and just go to the rim. We talked about Cable, the sophomore. 
ball was deflected a couple times, but she's able to get her hands on it. has got her feet set behind the line, and another triple for the Blue Devils, their sixth of the night. 37 to 16, Coastal Carolina will set up. They're shooting just under 29% for the game. Carter barely got it to the rim. The rebound is there, but another really good block by Emsbo. She had the one where she stepped out beyond the three against Kanje and then near the rim with a block. Another great rim protector for the Blue Devils. He's got a double high post screen right here. Tiana Mayer running the point for the Blue Devils against this interesting 2-3-ish zone. Forced the turnover. Here comes the Chanticleers and a layup. Finish from Freeman. Emsbo was posting up and good defense. Cable has hit two threes in a row for Duke. Tell you what, Duke's three-point shooting in these first two games has been pretty impressive. Cable comes off the bench, knocks down two. Blue Devils continue to switch on the perimeter. The game here from Emsbo, another rebound. She's just a great rim protector. In and out. Here comes the speedy Carter. Carter just threw it up there, looking for a whistle. Emsbo, perhaps lucky she didn't get a foul there. The Canadian for her second three of the game, spotted up behind the arc. It's a great job finding your teammate when she's open. Knocks down the easy one. Carter is going to go to the bench. Duke just altering every shot Coastal takes. Making, making scoring just so difficult as the shot clock winds down. And it's Cable with the steal. They're going to call a foul on Richardson. That might be, is it her third? That's her third, which is going to send her to the bench. And that's, that's uh, problematic for Coastal Carolina because she is the one player that they have to have on the floor. So Carter sat down for about 10 seconds, I think, right? <laughs> Not even enough time to get a sip of water. She's back in, a 22-point lead for Duke. With 2.15 remaining here in the first half. Good spin, but short from Emsbo. That's the freshman Ramsey with another rebounder, coach telling us what a great rebounder she is. Continue to drive and attack the paint. Yeah, kind of unlucky on the roll there for Freeman, the junior out of Little Rock, Arkansas. It is surprising how often they've been able to get in the paint, and Duke's got to do a better job being tough on the ball. You've got to guard your own man. Your favorite word on defense should not be help. You have to be able to keep your player in front of you. you know, Coach Lawson wasn't happy in the Richmond game with how many three-point shots, open three-point shots her team gave up. And I think at halftime, she's probably going to talk to her team about keeping Coastal Carolina out of the paint. Good hustle right there. Abron lost it. That was Mayer defensively. Carter hangs in the air, gets it out to Freeman. Freeman drives in, up and in. Wow, that was a nice job sharing the basketball. It's a little shot fakes to catch an attack. Staying in the zone, good ball movement by Duke. Woo. Cable, Cable, feeling it. Cable's on fire. The three-point barrage by the Devils continues. Eight for 17 from behind the arc for Duke. One more than their total against Richmond, and we're only halfway in. Yeah, that's a career high now for Cable from three. This is just really a great opportunity for Duke to see some of the, the players who were here last year take on different roles, get more minutes, and what they're able to do. You know, one summer, 
of college basketball after you played your freshman year or even your sophomore year makes a tremendous difference in how much you can learn and how much you can improve. And we're seeing that from some of these returning players today. Yeah, Cable only played in four games last year. Wow, that's a great move to the basket and a finish from Donovan. And she makes it look so very easy, doesn't she? Using the rim as protection, yeah, quality finish. We're seeing Cable get locked in defensively. Getting over the screen was Cable. Good cut from Carter. Pass was a little bit high. Allen for the rebound, and Ensbo swinging the elbows. They'll go the other way. Here comes Duke. Last shot opportunity here for the Blue Devils, 45 to 21. Duke shot out of a cannon, 10 zip in a blink of an eye. Coastal Carolina showed a little bit of heart, cutting it to six. And it's been mostly all Duke and a whole lot of fouls, and that one's going to be a little bit too long. Quick thought, Duke 45, Coastal Carolina 21. Not Duke's best basketball. I don't think defensively it was their best half, but wow, they're lighting it up from behind the arc, making it difficult for Coastal Carolina to stay in this game. A big first half for Emma Cable with a new career high, three threes, part of Duke's 45. Close that margin. We'll see what Duke does. Duke has five players with two fouls and Ashlyn Jackson with three. Need to tighten up the discipline on the defensive end. Credit the Chanticleers with their ability to keep attacking the defense and trying to get to the rim. Nice play drawn out of the halftime. Feed the post. We hadn't seen a whole lot of feeding the post for them in the first half. Kayla Kanje, their two-time Division II All-American, back in the zone. Turnover. Rough start here for Duke. Good non-whistle there. Perhaps we'll see more of that. Nice behind the back dribble there from Mayer. What a good finish. Boy, what a nice handle for number 22. Yeah, Tyana Mayer, she's crafty. Quick with the ball. Splitting defenders. Little finger roll. Run the post down low. Duke saying, you want to get it in there, you're going to have to throw over us. Emsbo starting the second half for Coach Kara Lawson. Reagan Richardson with a nice weak side defense. She's back in the game after being saddled with foul trouble early in this one. Brown. That shot she has not made. It's been the deep shot. That has been there for Brown. Speaking of deep shots, tremendous shot there from Richardson. Deja Richardson has no fear. Big bucket for her team. 27 to 26. I like the energy Coastal's come out with. You see these just very unique slides in the defense and another three for the Devils. This time from Mayer getting her first Three-pointer of the game. Make it nine for Duke. Had her feet set. Wow. Seven for 16. And their opening win against Richmond. And now nine for 18 with a whole lot of basketball left here at Cameron Indoor for Duke. Those are Duke's numbers from three land. Carter takes some contact. Good hustle from Coastal Carolina. Great hustle from Coastal. They're not backing down. They just continue to attack the defense. Here Lawson. Send in a Kanawa. Ball screen, fade screen, well defended. Just an errant pass there by Richardson. Mayer, really good handle here. Transfer from Boston College, Taina Mayer. She's spotted up. She's doing a nice job right now sharing the ball. You can see last season at Boston College, all freshman team in the ACC, over 11 points a game and 4.7 rebounds. She's listed at 5'9". Just tenacious on the board. Just gives Duke a nice all-around, another good solid guard inside out. Kennedy Brown 
finding her teammates, showing her passing ability again. And that's a Lucia Kanawa gets one of her, gets herself a three. You talked about how good of a passer Brown is. She was thinking pass even before she got the ball. She has great vision. She just knows where everybody is. Wow, nice take. Good finish by Hurston, the sophomore transfer from DePaul. The big DePaul, the Ray Meyer DePaul. <laughs> now you're showing your age. <laughs> <laughs> I am. Delana Carter right there taking the charge for Duke. I'm gonna say there was an elbow thrown there by Okanawa. Duke back in their press. I mean, Coastal's just not going away. They've come out of the locker room supercharged. They continue to attack the basket, see what they can do to get through this pressure. Duke's Cable, who had that big time first half is back into the game after Okanawa gets called for the foul and there's Cable defensively gets a hand in the face that's enough now Duke will go the other way Cable set up good pass why not oh in and out the lights were flashing on Cable Mayor step back in and out Kirsten with the hustle on the glass Chanticleers do a nice, I like their effort on the boards. I thought for sure Debbie Cable was gonna make that one. Forced by Emsbo. How about Cable though? She has nine points at the half, didn't score a basket in the opening game. Thomas, yeah, you talked about it's kind of been a role reversal, which was similar to last year, but the, the numbers are startling based on where who scored in the first game and who scored in the second game, right, Coach? Both Cable and Ashlyn Jackson didn't score in the first game, and in this game, we have 22 combined points. <laughs> Steal for Cable. Brown. There you go. She has to have that part of her game. And she finishes at the bucket. 10 points for Kennedy Brown. Yeah, you really want her to be able to establish her presence in the post. We know she can step out and shoot the three. We know she's a great passer. The lob pass over the top works. And the foul. Weak side help got there a little bit late. Here's Kennedy Brown. Nice lead pass. Nice look inside. Uses the rim to protect the shot. That's an easy one for her. Well done. Kennedy Brown, number 42, made those two threes and hasn't shot another one. Oh, and 12 points, I said 10. She's on the Lisa Leslie preseason watch list, 20 players, best center in the country. Second year in a row that she's on that list. You can see the versatility she has in her games. She started all 33 games last season. She is the anchor of the Duke defense, their rim protector. She can shoot at a high percentage from three. That'll really open up the court for the Duke Blue Devils and all this variety of talent for Duke. Cable, yes. Cable, ready to go. Got another one. Cable guy. It's a great look by Mayer to see her teammate on the cross court pass. Here comes Duke in transition. Cable sets her feet. Oh, side of the rim. Teammates are up off the bench on that. It's like, feed the hot hand. Look at Cable lock in defensively now, too. Let's see how she does here against Richardson. Richardson was calling for a screen, didn't get it. Now Carter. Carter all by herself. Nice backside rebound from Kanje. There's Kanje. You see how strong she is. We're going to get a foul on the floor right there. 
Duke on a row as they have paid their cable bill. Versatile, uh, the scoring ability in the Duke lineup and a bunch of players who can put the ball in the basket. Oh, they had a great play called out of that timeout, but short was Thomas. She was wide open. Really looking to work that low post area. That time Delaney Thomas came over with the help side defense. Coastal Carolina has been committed to trying to get it down low. Conjay's only taken to four shots, and she's their go-to other than Richardson, and she really hasn't been able to touch the ball as much as she normally does. And we said she's their two-time All-American, but touches have been limited and credit the Duke defense. Richardson gave a little shove there to Cable. Cable's playing well on both sides. It's amazing when you shoot the ball well you get a little light and next thing you know you're doing the job on the other side that'll get you a lot more minutes for coach coach lawson as well thomas has missed two six footers brown it's going to go back to coastal carolina sometimes good offense can fuel your defense it's the hope of the coaching staff that you play good defense the whole time you know and coach lawson telling us you know right now there's so much going on and there's so much to learn but the one thing you can always control is your effort you expect the freshmen to give you maximum effort even though they're learning the system and learning how to play at this level so well said Deborah Taylor, Debbie Taylor. Great to be back with you, by the way, Coach. Oh, and I love your purple jacket. <laughs> Looking good tonight. Nice execution there by Coastal. Shot just not falling. They continue to extend their defense. Long distance shot. Jackson, yes. And another one for Jackson. Four for eight from behind the arc, and that is 12 for 24 for the Blue Devils, but there is the answer for DeAsia Richardson with the three of her own. We wondered about Duke and shooting from three. They have answered the question in the first two games here. Yeah, and that zone continues to leave the weak side guard open. There's Mare knowing where her teammate is. Jackson just stepping into that trail spot. And then here comes Coastal with the answer with Richardson with a three of her own. Yeah, nice little three-point barrage going on. 12 for Duke, three for Coastal Carolina. Emsbo. Emsbo with a good finish. To me, Coach Taylor, what I loved that you just said is Mayor. She's got five helpers, and she has been aware of Duke behind the arc as she has found players open. That's and it's made a difference. Well, and you saw from her stat line from last year, not only can she score, she's got a great, you know, had a great assist stat. She's got tremendous vision. She knows where her teammates are at all time. Both she and Kennedy Brown both really see the floor well. That's good defense from Cable. If you want to get playing time from Coach Lawson, you better be able to play both sides of the ball. You better be able to, primarily, you better be able to play good defense. Hemsco did enough there. It'll come back to Duke. And yeah, Coach Lawson, she loves those shot clock violations. I don't know if there's a team in the country that gets more. I don't, I don't know if they keep track of that stat. They probably do, right? Yes, they do. Somewhere they, somewhere they have that stat. Well, Cable with the extra pass. That was a really nice ox offensive execution, though, against the zone. You know, and, and zones are things, well, most teams probably practice more against man than they do against the zone, so it's nice when you get to see a zone early in the season in a game and really see how you can run your stuff against it, and that, that was pretty. Yeah, that was pretty. I mean, Cable could have been unselfish. because She was open as she went under the basket, but was... Saw a player wide open, threw it out to Thomas. Ooh. There's a rare mistake in this game from Cable. She's gonna hustle back and get a piece of it, I like it. Great job. Errant pass, fix it on the other end. Hustles from behind and gets that back tip and knocks it out of bounds and breaks up that play. 
I looked immediately at Kara Lawson after she knocked it away, and Kara Lawson loved it. It completely eliminated the fact that, as you said, the pass was an errant pass. Coach Pedersen fired up. And there's Mayer with the quick hands, get, knocking that one out of bounds, getting it back for Duke. Here comes Jaden Donovan. Wood is the only player of the 10 for Duke that they need to find a bucket for. Trying to work that high post area, the sweet spot against the zone. If you can get it in there, you have a lot of options. Nice deflection turnover Duke. Here comes Coastal Carolina. Nice skip pass. Under a minute remaining, little runner, unlucky. Oh. You just wanted that one to fall for Richardson. That was a nice shot fake, nice little floater. Beautiful. Everything but the finish. Thomas had position for a moment. Jackson sets her feet. Yes. Making it look easy. Screen the top of the zone. Weak side has to help. Jackson spotted up in the gap. 19. Knocks down another one. 19 for Jackson. And 13 threes for Duke. And we're not even in the fourth quarter. Jackson set her career high in the opening game with 12, and she is seven above it as Thomas will go to the bench. So Wood is into the game. Right after we talked about, she's the only player without a point for Coach Lawson. 66 to 34. And here's the other irony of this game. In the opener, we talked about Richardson and Okanawa. They combined for 50 points. Right now, they combined for five. <laughs> so it's just a total turn of the tables in who's scoring for Duke today. I think that's going to make it fun. No. That's what Duke was able to do last year. You know, with their seven players that averaged over 13 minutes a game and they had seven different scorers, you know, leading scorers throughout the season on any given night, it could be anybody. And that's, that's tough to guard when that's the case. Amen. Yeah, you can't just say stop her. You can't do that against Duke. Free throw woes for Coastal continue. 50% is not going to get it done in any league. Mm. Nine for 19 now, under 50%. A little full court pressure, and this is what they need to do to get the ball back. The referees just let them play that one out. Yeah. Less whistles in that third quarter. A career, you can call me Jackson. Big time game. Miss Jackson, and what a difference a summer makes. Ashlyn Jackson, the sophomore from Texas, averaged 3.2 points in 13 minutes a game last season. And right now she is lighting it up from long range, taking it to the rim. 19 points on 7 of 12 shooting and just showing a little bit of her versatility and her ability to put the ball in the basket. Getting those 19 points in 18 minutes. That is efficient. Jaden Donovan, Jackson. Little runner. A push there from Richardson. like that effort on the boards though by Kennedy Brown. Duke needs her to be a big rebounder for them and she's she's the tallest player on the floor right now. You want to see her be dominating. Brown Jackson cross court to Wood. Wood cleans it up. Wood's also got good size. That's a nice finish from Jackson. She's feeling it. It is her night. McDonald's All-American. 
Tearing it up for a 22nd point. Oh, 21st, that was a two, my bad. No, you're good. Back to back for your highs for Jackson. She played in all 32 games for Duke a year ago. Limited minutes, she was a role player. And, and in, in the game against, game against Richmond, she started, but she didn't score. Nice transition. Look at, there's Jaden Donovan, the freshman, with the easy lay-in. Uh, Sidwell Friends High School in Maryland. There we go. Sidwell Friends, it's a great high school basketball program. Now the Chanticleers are just starting to fade. Nobody there on that matchup. They've been playing hard, regardless of the score. I've been impressed with their energy, the way they attack the basket, how they talk on defense. Wood had the steal, and right now, Wood is matched up against Stack. Duke just not even allowing passes on that scissor cut. We've got a foul right there. ahead and take it to the rim. A pretty textbook transition right there. Jaden Donovan laying it in with the left, making it look easy. That was beautiful. It's a lot of speed and athleticism on this Duke team. They like to get out and run in transition. We saw a lot of that the other night against Richmond. That's the first day of practice, the weave right there, right? Right out of the gates, run to perfection. Barely touched the ground. It's 70 to 34. Looking for a bailout. Kept alive. Good awareness. Stepping behind for three. Good rebound. Donovan bringing it here. For Coach Lawson backing down. Up with the left. Jaden Donovan. That's, she's showing you a little bit of what she's got in her tool belt. She can score outside, she can score inside. She's a tall guard who can post up and finish around the rim. Three-time gold medalist with USA Basketball, Jaden Donovan. Kanjay. It's a great job, Kanjay, just beating a slower defender to the rim from the high post. Duke's getting a little sloppy right now, and just because you've got a significant lead, okay, why not? There it is, Wood. Everybody has scored. Wood with the three. 6-4 freshman, the last one to get in the stat sheet. <laughs> Why not another three-point shot? That's nice defense by Reagan Richardson. She's back in the game. It's going to go out of bounds. It's hard not to like the look of Wood. Obviously, she's... Probably not going to play as much as some of the others, but six foot four forward that can shoot from three. She's from Chicago, part of that number six recruiting class. Clearly, all the players in this number six recruiting class have an ability to shoot it. Wood was coming for the high screen, but Brown said she's got it. Yeah, that's a oh, good idea. Boy, that looked perfect. Brown lost it. Good hands from Duke is Abron, the junior. Go down low, taken away by Wood. Wood. Riley Stack trying to get that pass over the top. Wood with the great defense. And the pass, too. Assist Wood. Here comes Reagan Richardson. She had a career high 28 in that opener at Richmond. Hasn't played a lot in this one due to foul trouble. So it's been Ashlyn Jackson who's stepped up and gotten it done, but she gets the ball in her hands and she knocks it down. Stay there, Reagan. You know, these are all players last year who didn't play as many minutes because Duke, Duke's lost their top three scorers. Two starters back, Richardson and Brown. 
but everybody else is there, and they're both good. Brown's kind of in the same, same role. She's doing the same thing. She started every game, but everybody else on this Duke roster that's a returner is kind of in a new role, and they're stepping into it nicely. Stepping into the three nicely as well. That's a tough shot. Wow, just working off that high post one way, taking away back the other way. I mean, it's tough to get your feet set coming back to your left. And a steal by Duke. Stack tries for the block. That was Wood on the steal again. Can't get it that way. Pivots back the other way and turns and gets her feet set, squares those shoulders to the basket and knocks that down. Beautiful shot. It's a good read on defense. Defense jumps out in front, go the other way. Kennedy Brown with a nice handoff. Lucia Kanawa, double-double in her opening game. Worcester Academy. Number 27th ranked recruit by ESPN in this in the class. It's gonna go out of bounds. That was all out effort from Jordan Wood. For a lob pass to Brown, right back in to the inbounder. To see Brown just establish her presence down there. Post up that freshman, get the ball. She loves to operate out of the pin. She's actually going to take her off the dribble. Ooh. There we go. Nice little spinning in. That's nice to see if you're the Blue Devil staff. 14 well done. for Brown. 82 to 36. Brown just fronting the post, not letting it in there. Nice deflection, good footwork, get around. Yeah, they're battling down low, and Brown is winning that. That's a good runner. Give Abron credit. Found the space. Read that screen and went the other way. Got into the paint again. I think when Duke watches film tomorrow, they're going to talk about all these shots that Coastal was able to get in the blue. Wood stays with it. Brown started the game making back-to-back -back threes. Has not shot a three since. Actually had an opportunity to shoot her third shortly thereafter, but decided not to. Goes to Carolina going the other way. They trip and fall. Pick back up by Duke. Duke's got numbers here. Runner in and out. Rebound Brown. Finish Brown. There she goes. 16 for Brown. Wood, how many times have we seen the quickness of Wood here as she gets a good run in the final quarter from Coach Lawson. Every single player getting it done, but the one mainstay that returned is Brown. Brown can shoot it from deep. She can spin it and put it in. It's 84. Coaches coming in and coaches from other states, but. USA basketball, what a treat. And some of the former ACC players get a chance to come back and Duke Derek Hamby from Wake Arike and Gumbawale hit that shot to win the national championship for Notre Dame. Diana Tarasi will be here, I think. Brittany Griner. Some good ones. Sabrina Ionescu, Morgan, yeah. some, some fan favorites. So if you get a chance, make sure you get out to Cameron on Sunday. What a treat we will have to have USA basketball here. Huge. That's Sunday at noon. Best to the best. I'm going to say basketball and Duke. Wood, another good pass. Rolls in and out for Richardson, who was starting to get hot here in the fourth. Look at Wood follow her shot, but just a little bit too late. So Coastal Carolina is going to go the other way. Under three minutes. I want to thank some folks. Our producer, Chad Lampman, McKenna Andrew, Will Black. On replay, Wesley Myers, Michael Dramino, Matt McCullough, Jamie Carr, part of our crew. And if I'm the Duke 
coaching staff. I think the other thing I'm going to take away from this game and talk to my team about is rebounding. I mean, the rebounding is pretty equal right now, and you're looking at a, a team who is not your equal um, and are not the same size and strength and physical stature that you are. And Duke right now, in my opinion, should be dominating the boards. But this Chanticleer team out-rebounded Georgia Tech in their first game. I'd like to see some uh, some the big big girls for Duke get in there and just really pull some boards. Kennedy Brown, Camilla Emsbo. Right now, the leading rebounder for Duke is freshman Jaden Donovan, which isn't a bad thing because she's so athletic and she's so tenacious on the glass. I'd just like to see a little more power in the paint, whether it's posting up on the offensive side of the ball, or grabbing some rebounds. Wood thought about a shot. Jackson. Or just make threes and everything will be okay. <laughs> wow. I think that was a two. 23 points on the night. Yeah. 14 threes for Duke. 14 of 31. They've assisted on 17 of their 32 baskets. I like that stat. Duke's doing a nice job so far this year, really sharing the basketball, really unselfish team. They work hard. Nice take from the high post, but that shot, too, was altered. Another offensive rebound. Just can't get it to go down for Ramsey. Rebound for Duke. I'll take the rest of the crew. Robert Gray. Ramsey will lose it. Coastal Carolina will go the other way. And giving you all the fine pictures are camera operators, Christopher Dubow, Chris Metzloff, Philip Robertson, Anthony Hanage, and we mentioned Coach K earlier. We've got our seven-footer, Mark Dry, also on the camera. Shot in for the Duke Blue Devils. Jackson just keeps adding points to her tally. 25 on the night. 10 of 15, Debbie. Five for nine from behind the arc. Two assists, three rebounds. Only one turnover. That's a nice stat. Looking for that high-low, able to get it and finish it for Ramsey, the freshman. Another good-looking freshman. The future looks bright for Coastal Carolina. This is a great freshman class for Coach Pedersen. Ramsey out of Delray Beach, Florida. I like this timeout. He's going to get his kids on the bench and give them an opportunity to play in Cameron. Do you, Cameron, do you know this is the first time these two programs have met? Welcome back to Cameron Indoor. Final 30 seconds here of this one. Duke got off to a 10-0 lead. Coach Pedersen for Coastal Carolina caught a timeout. They cut it to six, and then there was good night, Irene, after that. That's a nice rebound by Emsbo right there to keep this alive for Duke. Jackson was looking to tie Richardson's 28 points that she had in that opening win. All right, Duke has that interesting game on Sunday, which will be great for everybody, including her team. And then they keep on rolling. Your thoughts on what you saw here from Duke? This was a really nice offensive performance by the Blue Devils. Everybody scored, all 10 players. Four players in double figures. 25 by Jackson. 14 threes. The Devils shoot 47%, and they hold Coastal Carolina to under 30%. So a lot to be happy about, but also a lot of things to work on for both teams. Saw the handshake there with Kara Lawson and Coach Pedersen. I want to thank Chad Lampman and his amazing crew. Always great to be with our coach, Debbie Taylor, for each and every one of them and all of you. I'm Dean Linke saying so long from Cameron Indoor, where your final score is Duke 88.